great because the later we can share with our team. Okay, so I'm recording now. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, um, let me just minimize that. There we go. All right, can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Okay, so this is what the new Fast Track Four looks like. So. Um, okay, design wise, slightly changed. Sorry. Layout wise and design wise, you have changed totally changed the interface actually. Yes. So um, having, having going to .NET 4 gives us a lot more facilities than we had with .NET 2 as far as uh, look and feel goes. So it's uh, it's self-sizing screens in that now as well. So if I um, reduce the size of the screen, you know, the, it's, um, oh, you'll see on some of the other screens when I go into it, uh, they will self-size as we go through. So uh, some key of the areas, apart from just the look and feel of it is, um, from a technical point of view, if we can run it on SQL Server 2012, uh, we can use what's okay. known as uh, data compression. That gives up to about a 25% speed improvement. We can also use um, a HTTP compression, which uh, will speed up access especially from re remote users so you've got users in uh, Saudi and Kuwait and stuff don't you all right you do yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. that that will um, make their access a lot faster as well so that's some basic no. technical improvement um, some of the other uh, things we've got oh let, let me just go through it. I'll come back to these key buttons before um, but if we go okay. in go into this is just configured as a uh, standard demonstration so obviously it's not your system but um, basically if I go back again what we're seeing here on this line here where it's got corporate governance through to asset management um, that's what it would appear on your top line so currently um, on your current system, you've got, uh, I believe, uh, uh, system, knowledge, and compliance on your top line. Compliance, so right. you'd have those three buttons here. So you'd have a, a gray yeah. system button, a yellow um, uh, documents button, and a pink um, a compliance button. So that's what you'd have on your front. So then when you click on an entry to go into those, um, you'd end up in documents with the screen looking like this. So, um, so what's on your function or the second line down on your screen is what now is appearing in this line that I'm going through at the moment. So you would have right. here documents, engineering, um, I think indexes, and something else, I think, reports you've got on yours. So that's what will appear here. Um, up here is now telling me who's logged in. I've got a search button as well. And these are new things. There's a back button now, which everyone's been asking for. Uh, there's a refresh button and there's a home button. So the home button takes me back to that front screen. So um, on that. Within that, we then have our list of libraries as per the way that you currently have the system. And um, when I click on a library, obviously I will get up a list now of all the documents that are in that library. The, we've got a um, breadcrumb here that allows us to go back to where we came from. Um, so I can go backwards and forwards on that in addition to these home and back buttons there. Um, now what is on your upper process menu currently is now showing in a sidebar here. So we've changed the way that that works and looks. Um, so if I go to, as you can see, where I go, um, I could, I've then got sub menus on those as well coming down to here that I can click and select from. Our list of documents 
uh, again has changed. Now, some of the changes, if you were upgrading, um, we would convert your system as is, so without any new functionality, although the functionality is in there. But there is a functionality which we can integrate down the track. Uh, for example, the list of documents. Now, this screen is configurable, so we can actually change what fields show on this in this list if you wanted to. If you don't want to, you'll obviously. So, can. Can add the columns. Any column we, we can add from the forms? Correct. All right. So, and what, what's um, this list of records um, is particular to the function you're in. So, we can have a different list of columns for documents to cars to audit. So, each of those can have their own set of columns. It's got the normal right. things that, you know, clicking on a heading for sorting, um, paging through, um, all those normal things. What we've got here, these colored lights are the traffic lights. Do you use the traffic lights at all at the moment? Yes, we are using this with the status change. Correct. So, same thing, but now they're showing as a, um, a little round circle there. The um, little icon here tells me that there's a document attached to that um, record, and the other information is as per usual. Um, if we point at a We can also set up tooltips. See what they're coming up on on the screens as well. So you can point at things and it'll tell you what it is. Um, from that point of view, now one of the big areas is this related um, mapping we've got. Yes. So what it allows us now is to um, see. Let's see what am I in? There we go. So we've got this function now all the way through Fast Track. So uh, what it does is it's visually uh, showing what would normally be listed in the related um, tab at the bottom of a uh, document management screen. So all the things that are, are related back or linked to this document, in this case here I chose uh, 24, uh, poll 24. Um, is then it's showing me that it's got links to some federal legislations, to some health and safety documents. Um, it's in the, law, the policy manual. It's also in these other indexes. So, um, and I can, from there, I can drill down. So I can look to see what's related to the federal legislation by clicking on this drill down button. And it will bring up its okay. map if it has one, which it doesn't. Um, or I can open that document by clicking on the um, that button, and it's jumped into that document, as you can see there. So it's another method of navigating too. So I, I, I still can do the normal thing. So coming here, if I click on that document, no, I'm saying it doesn't exist, but if I had that document in my system, it would have opened it. Um, and yeah, all the normal things for that. So to work through a document, we can um, use the workflow. I'm not sure how you do it currently, but uh, when you go into the document info, I don't think this did it on yours. It brings up the workflow. Does your current system show the workflow on the left-hand side when you open the document? Yeah, all right, so we now open it as part of the document information, so you can see both together. Still works the same way. If I want to check out the document, I can click on the, the step there and it'll open it. And I've got the lower process and menu, which we really haven't changed um, on that. So I can look at the history of the document that all comes up, uh, or I can look at related or any attachments, those type of things through right. there. So that really That's bottom half thing. hasn't really changed. Sorry, did someone ask a question? No. Um, so yeah, so that really hasn't changed a lot. Um, All right. What about the libraries? User can create the libraries. Means admin. Sorry, say again. Admin can create the libraries by their end. 
Yes. Or yes. they have to run a script or can you show us creating one library? Or how, how to create it or whatever. Yeah. So basically that side really hasn't changed. Um, so on our menu, just as your current one does, um, there's an admin button if you're an administrator. So, and it brings up an admin, oh, a separate admin menu. And on that admin menu, you've got a setup button, you, or option, sorry, on the menu. You click on that and it brings up that screen. So this is now the list of all my libraries that I've got set up in Knowledge. And if I want to, I can, policies, I can open that particular library and I can change the information on it. So that would look similar to what your current system does. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So how about the compliance forms? The compliance module? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, what do I go back? So I go back here if I look at compliance. So I've got to audit and corrective actions per uh, per your system. Now, if I go into a corrective action, um, again, libraries come up. So again, same type of concept, list of the records as you would currently get them with your traffic lights and such on it. Again, this is configurable. So for example, whether the date is the date entered or the date by and all that, we can uh, configure all that on that now. Um, uh, oh, sorry, if I go into a record, so opening a car. Now, one of the new fields we've got on this is um, this lookup field. So, uh, if I click on the, the little spyglass, it'll give me a list of all the, in this case here, what audits are available to link this back to, which is what your current system has. We've added in this new button here, which is this little eye. And what it allows us to do is look up any related record, any of the records of the same type against this audit. So when I'm creating a car now, what it allows me to do is I can say what other cars exist against this audit. And by clicking on that button, it would bring up uh, no other ones there. Anyway, this would then normally display a list of any other cars against that particular audit. Or so I can put that little button against any field. So I can look at any cars against existing cars against the topic or in here, this case here, I've got a regulation, which is my standards. I can see what other ones are, have been raised against that. So that, that's a, a new feature that we can add on to screens. The other new feature we can add on to screens is putting in GPS coordinates as well. So I don't have any on this one, but if I add it, uh, so what I've done here is in this uh, location here, I've added on some uh, a GPS coordinate to it, which now if I click on that little look up button, it will jump to a, G, uh, a GIS system and I've just got it hooked up to Google Maps. Uh, no. Integrated with the Active Directory? Pardon? Is it integrated with Active Directory now? Uh, were you talking about for logins? The users, users. I'm talking about the users. You are picking up the users now from Active Directory or we have to create manually? You still have to cre create the um, users within Fast Track. So, but it's a, a single sign-on from logging in. Means the same way we are creating right now, we have to yes. follow the same process, or yes. is it integrated with Active Direct? We can pick up from there. No, that the from the Active Directory, when you go to log in, it automatically identifies who the user is and and, uh, and uh, logs you in. But that user has to be set up within Fast Track. So uh, okay, so, we have to so a custom password or. Take your Windows login credentials. No, yeah, well, it's automatic. So when you go in, so when I started this up, it just automatically goes into it because it, uh, it's got single sign-in. So it's picking up who I am from my uh, network login. Yeah. 
and automatically going into it. So if I, let me quit out of it. So if I go back in and start it up again, it automatically goes in and it's picking me up from my Windows login automatically. But I have to be set up in Fast Track as well. Now, okay. separately, we have to set up in Fast Track. Yep. So, yeah, so if when you set up your users in Fast Track, they need to be set up the same as they are in your Windows directory. So, you've got to have the same user code, user ID. And if you create the user ID in Fast Track, the same as the your um, Windows login, it will automatically just sign you in. Are your fast track user IDs the same as your network IDs? Sorry, it was disconnected. We couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Are your are your fast track user IDs the same as your Windows user IDs? I think we are yeah. using the same way. Yeah. So does it, do they automatically sign in now? It is right now automatically yes. But the problem, if you want to send the email for a new user which is not registered in Fast Track, we cannot find that. We have to register that user to send him the email. That's correct. So that hasn't changed. It's not changed. Right now it is same. It's correct. No, uh, in the system you said it's same. Okay. Okay, um, let me get back into it, corrective actions. What else, what else, what else? Um, so, oh sorry, going back to front screen. We've got, we've got these, sorry, question? Yeah, actually, that point is not clear. Uh, what uh, Mr. Swad asked you about the email. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm not sure what the question is. Can you ask it again? Can you hear me? Yes, correct. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, actually, we lost a connection. Yeah. Uh, we just want to uh, reconfirm about that emailing process. Is it covered in the new system that user can send email to anyone without register registering that user? Um, can they? In other words, you want to be able to manually put in a email address. Okay, so we have to enter that uh, user before sending an email, right? Um, let me think about it. We probably can get around that um, by uh, by configuration, by giving you a, a manually entered email address um, on a on a transaction that you're doing. So, what what type of record are you trying to email somebody? What kind of record? Uh, means document or compliance, anything from here. Are you talking about staff, people within your company, or are you talking about external people? Yeah, external or internal? Internal, internal only. Well, yes. Sorry. Well, all the internal people do need to be set up in Fast Track, correct? So we have to set up that user before sending email. That's correct. Oh, I mean, not not a user. In Fast Track, where, where do I have it now? That's the question. I've got it on here. Um, so, in Fast Track, we've got three things that need to be set up. The, the, that are set up. One is a list of persons. 
Okay. Second to that is a list of positions. And third thing is a list of users, which are logins. You can set mm, people so. up. You can set the person up, which is basically his name and his email address, without setting up a position for them or a user for them. Mm. So you can have set up in the system, you know, every person, if you like, in uh, in Yokogawa, along with their uh, with their name and their their email address, which you will then be able to use um, throughout the system. Now, what we can do if, if that's a, a a thing that keeps changing and it's a bit of work for you, we can supply you with an Excel spreadsheet for doing that. So we've got the ability to create. A list of people off a um, off a spreadsheet. Then we can import that to give the list. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So. Okay. So that that facility is available too. There we will come after you finish this. After you show this. So something else you have to show. Yep, yep, so a few more things yet. Um, on this front screen when you come in, we've got these buttons down the bottom, which is My Diary, My Alerts and things. Now, what this allows you to do is for the, the user who's logged in, if I click on My Activities, it's a quick way for me to get a list of all the transactions that I'm involved in. So instead of having to actually go into a module and navigate down through it, this has given me all of my current records that I can quickly go into, and if I want to, I can click on it and open that record and work on it and do what I like. Um, uh, what else? Um, uh, my diary, obviously, for um, that, and alerts. So alerts are a subset of activities. So these are, alerts are a list of just the um, records that are overdue for me. So um, it's a way that makes users a lot easier than having, having to actually nav navigate through fast track because that's available to them on the front screen. Um, one of the, the next big issues we have in the system is the ability to output to Excel. So mm -hmm. now within fast track, um, I just want to pick somewhere where I've got some decent data. Yeah, so uh, as part of the upgrade, what we do is we generate this um, Excel extract for every screen that you have. So for any screen, you, you can go in now and you can call up... Um, You can call up a list, and what it will do is generate a, a, a dump, basically, of your system into Excel for whatever the, the screen area that I've just gone into. So here I've just gone into minor corrective actions, and it gives me a it creates a a, um, a spreadsheet of all the data that's in that oh. library that I just went into. So I can now play around with that data in Excel any way I like on there. Um, it creates this using a template. So, um, and you've got access or control over your own template. So you, you can change the color and the look and uh, the, the format of columns and all that in the template before you output it on that. So that function is available for every module. So whether we're talking documents or audits or cars, um, we've got that. Also, with the new version, we've got uh, pivot tables. Which uh, are you aware of pivot tables? Yeah, we are using that separately. So the same thing again. We can generate a dump of your data into a pivot table. Again, the pivot table um, is based on a template that you can manage and control yourself. So you can design your own pivot tables that you want to uh, analyze your data with. And it comes out. 
So basically what will happen now is that it'll take a dump of what's in the system, a snapshot of what's in the system and generate a ticket <laughs> table for me, which um, if you're aware of pivot tables, gives you all that normal functionality. So I've now got a, a graph here being an analysis of what this data is. Um, I can filter it. I can say, just give me the production units. Um, I can go down or up on those. Um, and I can drill down on it. So if I want to see what makes up this number eight of uh, audits here, I can click on that and I get a list of those as well. So you've got that functionality in it. Um, what else have we got? Uh, GPS. How about the conversion to the PDF? Does it yeah. export all the Office documents, yeah. including Visio? Um, so exporting. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry. It it does Excel and PDA and Word documents. Uh, you're talking about just generating. Uh, or. Document in a PDF format. Yeah, saving on the PDF. Yes, we can do that for an Office document. Including the Visio, right? Yes. So right. you, you're talking about a library of uh, Visios here, aren't you? That you want to then save as a. Yeah. Yep. There is a Visio in the library, then finally we want to publish this for the end user on the portal, the self service I'm talking about. Yep. So you want the document to appear on the portal as a PDF. Exactly. Yeah. That can be done, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, about the uh, functionality is fair enough. We can uh, look into it later as well. Uh, we are more concerned about the migration process. You know our uh, like whole environment, what we have right now. Yep. So what is your plan, how you can migrate or upgrade it to the latest version? And how many days you require? Because since it is in operation, so we have to look into it like uh, how many days we require for real migration. Right. The way we go about it by setting it up in a test environment. So what we would do is get you to copy your existing production system into a test system. And with the data. Sorry. With, with the, data. the complete data. Yes. And we'd okay. upgrade and we'd upgrade that uh, test system for you then okay. to play with it and verify that it's all correct. So at that stage, you're still using your production system live. So uh, you're not down for it. Now that migration that we do, we do. Sorry, we lost the audio. Sorry. We lost the audio. Okay. We lost the audio. All right. I'll repeat. So. Yeah. Right. We we take a copy of your production system into the test, and we right. up, we upgrade it in test while you still use production live. Okay, parallel to the test, right? Correct. Okay. And we then run a set of scripts, or we develop a set of scripts for that upgrade, which mm -hmm. once you have tested and, and approved that it's all happy in the test environment, we can run basically within an hour, really. Um, plus, I've got changed documents too, don't we? So, um, but basically, is you you will only be down for a very short amount of time. All right, sounds great. So it will take all the customized uh, fields as well. You know, we have created a lot of customized fields in the uh, current system. Uh, yeah, well, it should keep everything that you've got. So we're not changing. Yeah, you know, we're not. Um, the migration really is a in place update. So everything. And what version of SQL Server you are using for the upgraded? Sorry, what version of Word? So what was the question? SQL Server. Database. Database. What database version you are using? All oh, right. So yes. So from a, um, a database, we uh, prefer to have SQL Server 2012 Enterprise. Do you have that available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And, and for Office, we need um, Office either 2010 or 2013. 2013. Right. So, yeah. and Windows, it can, it can be Windows Server 2008 R2 or, uh, or better. Okay. Uh, can we see that uh, self service for the new version? Sorry, I'm not sure. So, sorry, I missed the question. Yeah, yeah. Can we see that uh, web part means a website uh, or self service, what you call it, a portal for the end users? The, the, we don't change that. So the portal with the end users will be the, the current portal you have. So because we're right. so this fast track is just publishing into that same portal. So your portal okay. screen won't change at all. Okay. So about the licensing, uh, there is no change in the license once we upgrade it. Correct. This is all understanding, right? Sorry. There is no change in the licensing. No. This is what we understand. It will remain as it is, right? Correct. Is it possible some discount we can give? Yeah, after upgrade, we are expecting some discount from your side. No. <laughs> because we suffer a lot <laughs> in the old version. No. And right now we are paying quarterly. Yeah. If we want to pay yearly, can you give some discount on that? You can check the uh, You got that question? Sorry, yeah. I, I didn't hear that. Can you say again? No. Actually, Mr. Ayub is asking that we are uh, currently receiving quarterly uh, your invoices, right? Yep. If we pay. I lost you again. Can you hear me? No. Hello. Yeah, sorry, back. I missed you then. You fell out again. Can you hear me? No. Where is the mic that I'm talking into? Maybe, mic is Maybe you don't want to hear this question. <laughs> yeah, I keep turning the sound off. Sorry, can you ask the, the same question again? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will be quick. Right now we are getting uh, your invoices on quarterly basis. Okay. Right. So if we pay you on yearly basis, do you offer any discount on that? I'll have to go to the accounts people and ask. That that's beyond my pay grade. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm sure we can offer you some discount if you want to pay annually. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So I'll put that forward. Um, so the there is a cost of upgrading, which is a the cost of the our services to do so, which is roughly about um, uh, well, about seven thousand dollars Australian. So, so okay. now what okay. we would need though, what we would need is um, VPN access to your system or to the test system to develop these right. these scripts. Um, hmm. So yeah, we, we don't want access to your production system, just the test system. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can arrange that for you. For that uh, QMS portal, yep. can we restrict some users to access some documents? Right now it's open to everyone. Everyone can access any document. So how can we achieve that? Um, Do we have to write yeah. uh, like some kind of or something. Yeah, normally that would have to be done at your end on, um, uh, you know, on access to that uh, either that URL or that location on disk. Um, are, are you talking about different groups of people? Kind of. Um, what we like I mean, we can make some groups so we can add those documents so not everyone can access will have access to that document. What we can do is we can create subfolders in that location for each um, index or each manual. Mm -hmm. And then you, from a, uh, a network 
uh, access point of view, you can put different security on each of those folders. Okay. That's really, okay. otherwise it's a, you know, it's a, because the portal's really outside of our direct control of Fast Track. Mm. Yeah. All right, Greg, so far it seems okay. Yes, no, really Okay. He, he said he will check with the accounts. <laughs> okay, so what we will do, uh, first, can you FTP or uh, I don't know how big this file will be, the recording you have done. Yep. So can you send it so we can share with other team members, they can have a look to it. Yep. So and, uh, uh, we will come back to you for uh, details on the server. Okay. okay. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email on... Um, on what we can offer for an annual uh, uh, support agreement. Yeah. Right. 20 or 30 percent will be more than enough for us. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have something by for two years, we'll get to uh, real free. <laughs> okay. All right, Greg. Thanks for your time. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, give me a day to edit this file. Um, because uh, it will have a lot of stuff on the edge of it, which I'll have to clean up. I'll do that and hopefully upload it by uh, the end of tomorrow. No problem. Sorry right. with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Yeah,